Greetings and welcome to my new calculus channel. My name is John Gabriel and today I'm going to just clear up a few misconceptions about differential and integral calculus. So let's begin. Now, if you look at very popular resources such as the Encyclopedia Britannica, which by the way was one of the first places that I learned about calculus. In fact, I taught myself calculus from the Encyclopedia Britannica, not a very good place, but um, anyway. So it says that the differential calculus is concerned with the problem of finding the rate of change of a function. That's completely false, by the way. It's utter and complete garbage uh, with respect to the variable on which it depends. So let's see why that is nonsense, okay? So first of all, differentiation has nothing to do with finding the rate of change, quotes, of a function for several reasons, okay? The first one, and the most important being that nothing in a function changes. The tangent lines haven't changed in past perpetuity, are not currently changing, and will remain the same indefinitely. Indefinitely. Okay, so what that means is that <laughs> given any smooth curve, and you can read my articles to find out what smooth means, uh, all the, ah, I can't draw properly, all the tangent lines, that exist are not changing. They've been there since past perpetuity uh, or past eternity are still the same and will continue to be the same, okay? So that's utter garbage. And then of course the so-called variables are not actually variables but fixed values that are mapped to each other. How? Through the function algorithm or rule. In other words, Nothing's changing here. When you write y is equal to x squared, nothing's changing there. x is not a variable and neither is y. For any given parabola, all those values, okay, all these values along here, all these magnitudes are mapped to magnitudes on, on this axis, okay? So you have mapped pairs x, y, or y, x, y, ever you prefer, prefer to set. So they're not variables, okay? And nothing depends on anything else. It's a rule which says that given x, y is the product of x by itself. That's all it says, okay? It doesn't depend on x. It's a rule. It's given, okay? Now, so independent and dependent are terms that come out of the flatulence of stupid mainstream mathematics professors like Gilbert Strang from MIT, Jack Hazinger, ex-Harvard alumnus, all those morons, okay? Now, so you don't, they're not variables, okay? Then next, velocity, acceleration, etc., are meaningless in calculus, okay? They're meaningless. Why do I say that? Listen carefully, you, you mainstream idiots, because you suffer from Dunning-Kruger the very, uh, the very effect that you created to criticize others, you suffer from it unless there is a smooth function that models the same. Okay. So in other words, <laughs> you know, it doesn't matter what you talk about when you, when you say something like this, let me just make you understand this. So if you say S of T is equal to some expression in T, right? And then you want to find S dash of T, which is the velocity. This only works if this expression here is a smooth function. And I've got a newsflash for most of you idiots. <laughs> most real life situations do not conform to a smooth function. What does that mean? It means you can't use this. So all those exercises that your moronic professors and teachers of mathematics give you, where they have graphs like this and they have you calculate the area and the slope. So they tell you that the slope is, uh, you know, S over T and the area is S times T, etc. All that garbage, it's actually totally irrelevant in real life. Why? Well, I'm about to explain to you. 
So the reason why is that in real life, calculus is never used for these calculations, okay? None of them. And in any of these things. So it's totally untrue that we wouldn't have gone to the moon if we uh, had we not had calculus. We would have gone to the moon, calculus or no calculus. So these concepts are, cal are calculated without calculus. In other words, um, if you want to have a finite difference, um, such as, uh, you know, F where the time starts and subtracted uh, F where the time ends, where both time start and time end are inputs from some device, then you can say, okay, this is more or less the, the, uh, it's, it, it, it is actually the level magnitude or arithmetic mean and never evaluate an instance. So this finite difference doesn't give you a velocity or acceleration at a given instant, regardless of what F is, whether it's uh, distance, velocity, acceleration. So, and in most cases, there isn't even a finite difference. Stop the video and just think about that. Nothing like this actually happens. Anyway, let me give you a simple example. Um, a speedometer performs no calculations whatsoever. They use both analog and electronic input to determine speed. In other words, the number of revolutions per second. Okay, Nothing is calculated. It's all done through sensors. Okay, So when something gets to a certain speed, a sensor is activated and it points to a particular position on your speedometer saying, okay, this is the speed. All right. So nothing... Nothing is actually using calculus, not in speedometers, not in rockets, none of that shit, not even in computers like you commonly hear. Okay, so what are, what are the main purposes of calculus? The main purposes of calculus are in engineering and architecture. Did you get that, morons? Those are the main purposes. Now, when physicists use calculus, they need a smooth model. Without a smooth model, you cannot use the methods of calculus. They are both null and void. Okay, what is a smooth function? Let's just quickly go over that. <clears throat> so geometrically, we can say what is a smooth function. A smooth function is one such that for any given interval like that, we can construct only one tangent line at any point in this interval, okay? So we say this function is smooth over the interval PQ, if that's the case. And of course, a tangent line must extend to both sides of the point of tangency, and it can never intersect at the point of tangency. We don't give a shit whether it intersects at other points. Those are not points of tangency, you morons, mainstream mathematics professors, I mean, and mathematics teachers, okay? so. Listen to me carefully. That's what it means for a function to be smooth. That's how the ancient Greeks defined it. They called the tangent line ephaptomene, okay? And they talked about uh, a function being, a function smoothness being measured by a straight line. So the utter imbeciles and idiots who came after them didn't understand these things. Otherwise, they wouldn't have written all this crap in Encyclopedia Britannica. And I mean, and of course, this article was recently revised and updated by some moronic idiot, William L. Horsch. Don't even know who he is. Horsch. Anyway, derivatives focus on tangent line slope. Okay. They do not focus on bullshit such as what you see in this article. Okay. The rate of change and velocities and crap like that. Nothing, nothing about that. Their main use is in calculating areas, volumes, uh, uh, hypervolumes, etc. If you do not have a smooth function, you can toss calculus out the window. Okay, so uh, there's no such thing as a, a rate of change or an instantaneous rate of change with respect to calculus or a value at an instant. All these things simply mean the function value uh, mean, mean the slope of a tangent at a particular point on the function. That's all it means. All these garbage expressions here, which uh, uh, fools like Gilbert Strang and others have woven almost inextricably in textbooks all over the last century and uh, up till now, are 
obfuscated rot. Okay, they're old hand-waving garbage that uh, shows how these shameless fools have never understood calculus. And of course, their minions and their lackeys who are their psychophant students, etc., simply just soak up all the bullshit that they hear from their professors. Okay, it is moronic to say that integral calculus deals with total size. What else can size even mean? Total size? Total is redundant. But again, mainstream academics are clueless idiots. Integral calculus deals with a product of level magnitudes. Okay, that's what it deals with. Integral calculus says, uh, if we know the level magnitude of all the values in here, then we can multiply it by the interval width. And we have, whether it be area, volume, etc. Okay. And these are related through the mean value theorem, which is the fundamental theorem of calculus. Okay. This, this is the fundamental theorem of calculus. And if you're thinking, oh, that's a mean value theorem. Yes, idiot. That's where you get your fundamental theorem because you multiply both sides by the interval width, which is the other arithmetic mean. FC is the one arithmetic mean, and this is the other one. So that when you do this, when you do this, it's equal to the integral from P to Q, right, of F of X dx. Did you get that, idiots? And C's some point in the middle here. That's what it means. It doesn't mean any of the drivel that you hear your professors tell you. They're all morons. Okay. Integral calculus deals with the product of level magnitudes, also known incorrectly as arithmetic means. By the way, an arithmetic mean is a total misnomer. It has nothing to do with the middle of anything or relative position. Nothing with either of those concepts. Those are totally irrelevant, unnecessary obfuscations. The last point is a differentiation and integration are not inverse processes at all. Differentiation deals with slope and integration deals with areas, volumes, etc. In general, anything that is a product of level magnitudes. All right, then. I hope You've learned something from this, and you'll be a lot smarter than any of your math lecturers or teachers who are invariably idiots. Uh, become a subscriber, click like, uh, follow me on Academia. I'll place links to this, and I'll give you a summary of this in the detail section. My name is John Gabriel. Till next time, goodbye.